Meeting to order, I called upon our secretary K R Narayanan to start the meeting with a conventional prayer. Over to Narayanan for prayer, please. Heaven of freedom, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where the knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where the words come out from the depth of Truth, where tireless striving stretches its arm towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert and updated habit, where the mind is led forward by the ever widening thought and action into the heaven of freedom, my father, let my country away. Thank you. Thank you, Narayanan. Thank you very much. Friends on same wavelength, Chennai Annanagar chapter. Welcoming you all for our 166th meeting. That is, we have completed 13 years, 10 months without a break. It gives me great pleasure of welcoming our fellow Phosphorians, ICC Cupertino, Phosphorian Hyderabad, Phosphorian Chennai Adayar, Phosphorian Vijayawada, and my music group. And such of those members who have joined for the first time in our for our chapter, I welcome them all. And I take the pleasure of welcoming our today's distinguished speaker, no my other than Professor Dr. R. V. Ashan Sharmagaru, highly qualified physician, MD, MSc, double FRCP, a senior consultant physician of Manipal Hospital, Bangalore, and also he happens to be our Vice President of our chapter. I welcome you, sir, in spite of your busy schedule, you could make it today and you are going to talk to us on a very, very useful and an interesting topic, how to prevent fractures in this old age. Let us all listen to him. After this, the discussion will follow. You can put up your questions. He'll be too happy to clarify or answer us. Before proceeding further, I call upon our Joint Secretary Ananda Kumar to introduce our distinguished speaker, Professor Dr. R. B. S. N. Sharma, Rasa Gonda. Okay. Over to Ananda Kumar, please. Good evening, dear Fossilians. All of you are eager to add comfortable years to your lives by learning from Dr. Rajkonda Venkata Sarmagaru on how to avoid fractures in old age. This is my 12th introduction of our Vice President. Since his heavy biodata is already circulated and read by all members, I recapitulate his earlier found Founders Memorial Lectures in which I participated <coughs> For a better introduction of this versatile doctor friend of us, is a man of perfection and in-depth studies. It's any subject he touches, he will go to the bottommost portion of it. I introduced him in our 105th meeting and reached, reached 166th now. He engages us on immunization for the, for the elderly, a Jugal Bandi with our vice, our president on Tyagaraja Antharyam, COVID-19, eight Tyagaraja Kirtanas, Adi Shankara's Ekasloka, the seer, the seen, and the seeing. Then cancer screening and prevention, prostate gland enlargement, Adi Shankara's Advaita, power of Dhyana, and lastly, frozen shoulder. I distinctly remember him actively enhancing the value of the discussion on temples of Hampi and Krishna Devaraya's Sahit Chopasana with 
his recitals of Telugu poems of Ashtadigajas. His spectrum and in-depth peeps into chosen subjects is simply captivating. I honestly feel that every one of us are experienced, worldly experience and wise to deliver such quality lectures. Given an opportunity, I would like to explain you Ichigo Ichi, a Japanese life lesson. Mr. T.C. Raghupati and I watched two members of Hyderabad chapter giving their account of a trip to Vietnam and Cambodia that was quite engaging. All of us are going all around the world. We can also deliver such lectures. This Founders Memorial Lecture is the result of two endowments of Rs. 50,000 each created by our Founders, Dr. M. L. Swami and his beloved wife, Mrs. Rangamani. For Hyderabad chapter, every month is an endowment lecture. It is just 10 more endowments that are required to keep Ananaga going with endowment lectures every month. Kindly give it as a thought. Over to Dr. Sarmagaru for the next one hour. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anand Kumar, for your wonderful introduction. Now, without wasting my time, I would like to hand over the mic to our distinguished speaker, Professor Dr. R. V. S. N. Sharma, also our Vice President of our chapter. Over to Professor R. V. S. N. Sharma, sir. Please listen to him. And after his talk, he is open for discussion with our members. Over to Professor R. V. S. N. Sharma, sir. Thank you very much. Wonderful evening. Wonderful friends, of course, of the same wavelength, and other friends who are in the other Achena group where I study Advaita Vedanta. And uh, I request all of you to mute your videos and audios, those who are having the power. Others I will mute from here itself. So we will straight away go into the lecture. Very nice introduction by our friend Anand Kumar Garu. We I keep meeting him and talking to him quite often. Now, the topic of today's uh, presentation is uh, fractures. What leads to fractures in old age is what is called the bone thinning or loss of bone strength, which medical terminology we call it as osteoporosis. Before entering into that, let us pray the Almighty. Yes, Madhyatam Jagat Sarvam, Yes, Min Neva Praliyate, Ye Nedam Dharyate Chaiva, Tasmai Gyanatmane Namaha. This is a prayer to your own Atma Deva, Mahyam Namaha. I am making Namaskar to myself. Myself here is the Atma Deva inside. Okay. What is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is loss of bone strength. Is it a very simple condition like graying of the hair? No. You may think that in old age there will be fall of hair, there will be growing, glow, I mean, gray hair. Similarly, bone weakness also is an old age. Don't rub it off like that and brush it under the carpet. It is a hidden hazard. You will come to know shortly why bone thinning or bone weakness is a hidden hazard. What is bone? What is bone strength? Bone is not a dead tissue. It is a living entity. In fact, it is a living organ. Just like your liver, your heart, your kidneys. Bone is an organ which has several functions. One among them, very important one, is the support to the body as the framework. The other important function is it generates the blood cells for you, the blood formation and the immune cells also. Such bone given by the Almighty, we want to keep it strong and also flexible. Why flexible? Suppose I jump from a height or I fall from a height. If the bone is flexible, there will be a slight bend and it will come back. Just like, you know, a stem of a tree, 
the stem of a plant with, with wind it bends and comes back. So that is called the flexibility. The other is called the strength. So bone should have the flexibility and the strength. Generally, you think bone is not flexible. Bones are flexible and bones are strong, provided we take all the care. Another thing is the beauty, beauty of the bone is it is remodeled every day. Almost every day, there is deposition of the minerals, calcium, phosphorus and other things and also remodeling. Just like a sort of a person who is constructing a wall, a mason, he puts a lot of cement onto the wall first. That is called addition of the uh, bone minerals. Then he scrapes away unnecessary things. That is called the removal of the extra part. One is called deposition of the mineral. The other is called the removal of the excess mineral so that the bone is properly modeled. Something like constructing a wall. What are the two ingredients most important ones in the bone? One is the collagen. What is collagen? Collagen is a beautiful protein which is something like a rubber band. So the collagen gives the tensile strength or the flexibility. Calcium and phosphorus, they give you the, the strength or the mineral density. So the collagen is the flexible part and the calcium and phosphorus are the strength part. The collagenous proteins give tensile strength and the mineralized content, the calcium and phosphate, their salts when deposited in the bone, they give the compressive strength. This is important. In osteoporosis, particularly in the elderly, in the old age, osteoporosis both are affected. Both the tensile strength is affected and also the compressive strength is affected. Remember once again, osteoporosis is not like to be rubbed off as gray hair or loss of one tooth. It is very serious condition which can be very hazardous. There is brew. What is brew? Not what you drink as brew. Bone remodeling unit. What is, what is that? There is a unit which a group of laborers working to put mineral into the bone. There is another group of laborers in the body who try to remove the excess bone and make it into a proper strong tensile bone. The balance between these two forces is actual bone strength. What are the things which govern this brew? Who is the commander or leader or the main mason of the brew? Age, gender, vitamin D, calcium and parathyroid hormone which is called PTH. PTH is parathyroid hormone. These three, vitamin D, calcium and PTH are the ones which manipulate the bone strength and bone flexibility. Age and gender are factors which will have a negative effect as we age and female gender is at a disadvantage as far as the osteoporosis is concerned. Imbalance between these factors results in osteoporosis. Remember, the peak bone mass for all of us is achieved by around 30-35 years. That means the maximum amount of bone strength will be around 30 or 35 years. By 85% 85, 85 of the bone mass is already attained by the age of 20 years. Now, 20% of this is dependent upon adequate calcium intake throughout childhood and exercise. Exercise and good calcium intake are the forerunners of good bone strength. Bone mass starts to decline from the age of 40 itself. Then what is old age as far as osteoporosis is concerned? 50 years for women and 60 years for men is called old age as far as the bones are concerned. You may look very young, you may feel very young, you may work hard also, but the bones start becoming old from 50 years in, the, in women and 60 years in men. Then what do I do? I want to keep young, so keep the bones healthy, so that they are 60 years, at 70 years also they are healthy. Yearly, yearly 1% of men above 50 years lose the bone, around 5% of the bone is lost after menopause every year. 
every year 5% of the bone is lost every year 1% is lost in men after the age of 50 years now this chart shows you this is a active growth you know the baby the child the teen and then the adult the peak bone mass is around 30 years or 35 years then slowly the bone mass starts residing i mean receding uh, particularly in women after the menopause so every woman who is postmenopausal either by nature or by surgery that means if they get their reproductive organs removed due to surgery any woman she is considered as already a negative as far as the estrogen is concerned estrogens are the protective hormones in the women during the uh, reproductive period once the reproductive period is over the estrogens come down likewise in men also the androgens come down after 60 65 years and the bones start becoming very weak then why, what do i do what is osteoporosis i do i, I want to know osteoporosis i am supposed to know about fractures yes fractures are dependent upon the bone strength osteoporosis is a forerunner for fracture what is osteoporosis a skeletal disorder characterized by compressed bone strength both the tensile strength and the the power to take the take the weight predisposing to increased risk of fractures strength of the bone is dependent upon the density the mineral density of the bone and the quality the tensile strength of the bone. so mineral density and bone quality product is the bone strength you can see here low bone density is very common 48 million people with low bone density this is medically called as osteopenia osteopenia means low bone strength osteoporosis is it is already there so thinned out that the disease has started osteoporosis is where the disease has started whereas osteo osteopenia is low bone density 61 million people are at risk of the osteoporosis 66 percent of the people with osteoporosis are women roughly Two thirds of the osteoporosis is in the female gender, one third is in the male gender. This is all the more important for all our women, our mothers, our sisters, our aunties to take care of themselves very much. Now, you see, comparatively, breast cancer produces this many deaths in life. This is the disease burden due to breast cancer. This is the disease burden due to brain stroke. This is the disease burden due to heart attack. The disease burden due to osteoporosis, you can see it is this much, roughly five times the risk of breast cancer, roughly three and a half times the risk of heart attack. This we don't know. We think heart attack means very serious and bone strength, loss and fractures, we think we ignore it is not very, very important. It is something like gray hair. We will try to brush away. Then what causes bone? This osteoporosis. Hereafter, I say OS. OS means osteoporosis. In Latin, OS means osteoporosis. We use the same term for simplicity. What are the important risk factors? Low calcium and low vitamin intake in the foot. Two, somebody who is of thin frame, less than 19 BMI, that is, you know, 45 kilos, 40 kilos, 35 kilos. 50 kilos, something like that, a lower body weight is responsible for a risk factor for osteoporosis. Limited exercise from childhood. This is a very important factor. Exercise is a contributor for every good thing in the life. Exercise also similarly is very important. Right from childhood, one has to encourage exercise. And the two devils, alcohol, smoking, and the, the habitual uh, a sort of thing, the caffeine, smoking, alcohol, and caffeine. What are the lifestyle things which can produce, which can be corrected? All these things can be corrected, isn't it? Low calcium, vitamin D intake can be improved. 
bone, the body weight can be improved to normal weight. Regular exercise can be done. Smoking alcohol and caffeine. These are the modifiable risk factors. What are the non-modifiable risk factors which we cannot do anything? Female gender. 4 is to 1. 4 times a higher risk in women compared to men. Likewise, Asian population or European population is more at risk for osteoporosis than the African population or the Spanish population or the American population. Asians and Europeans are at a higher risk. There are certain genes associated which we are not interested in to this audience. Now, increasing age, I cannot control it. My gender, I cannot change it now. And postmenopausal status, that is also non-modifiable. And then previous history of fracture. If you had a fracture earlier, the chances of osteoporosis and a recurrent fracture is very high. Family history of fracture. A mother, particularly mother had a hip fracture. The chances of the, her, her daughters having hip fracture is very high. Drugs like, you know, steroids, corticosteroids, thyroid hormones inappropriately used and anti-convulsant drugs like, you know, drugs used for fits and other disorders. Okay. Lifestyle, calcium, low, low calcium, vitamin D, thin frame, low BMI, no or limited exercise, smoking, alcohol, caffeine are the modifiable risk factors. Non-modifiable Gender, females outnumber 4 is to 1, Asian race, European race, increasing age, postmenopausal status, either natural or surgical, previous history of fracture, family history of fracture. Certain medicines like corticosteroids, excess use of thyroid hormones inappropriately and ACD, anticonvulsant drugs are some of the risk factors. Why falls occur in the elderly? Why falls are more common in the elderly compared to the youngsters? 90% of the hip fractures are due to falls. Hip bone, you all know, the, below the waist, just when the legs, where the legs join, that part is called the hip bone. The hip fractures are due to falls. Falls risk increases with increasing age due to osteoporosis. A 70 the falls, 90% of the hip fractures occur due to falls. Falls risk increases with osteoporosis with age. 70-year-old woman has five times higher risk of fracture. Risk factors for falls in the elderly, they, they, they may have some neurological conditions, some nerve disorders, muscle weakness due to old age, visual impairment, not able to see properly the flooring, Impaired recognition of uh, the surroundings, loss of postural sense. That is when they walk, you know, they don't know where they're putting the foot and walking. Certain medications they consume might make them unstable or sudden fall of blood sugar, hypoglycemia, or them have a sudden cardiac uh, rhythm problems, beat problems, or some drop attacks called the syncopal attack. These are some of the medical conditions. Most importantly, we can concentrate on the osteoporosis and the external factors. Neurological, muscular, visual, of course, the doctors will evaluate and try to correct those factors. Flooring, lighting, new places, outdoor hazards are some of the causes for the fractures in the elderly. Look at the left side here. This is the normal bone, very thick and very much mineralized. The central areas don't think they are all dangerous conditions. The central openings are the spaces in the bone, in the bone marrow. Whereas if you look at this bone, you see the skeleton of the bone or the structure of the bone has become very weak. This is an this is a electron micrographic photograph. Not when you take a photo with the cell camera. This is with the electron micrographic photograph. Left one is the normal and right one is the thinning of the bone or osteoporosis. You see, this is the vertebra. The vertebra is, are in the spine on the back. In the vertebra, the very thick and trabeculated. Here, the trabeculae are very, very thin and bone is thinned out. See the structure in the electron micrograph. Very thick framework. 
हियर वेरी वेरी थिन आउट लूज अबाउट टू ब्रेक बोन ऑस्टे नॉर्मल बोन एंड ऑस्टेपोरोटिक यू सी दिस इज द नॉर्मल फीमर द the thigh bone this is where it joins the hip joint and this is the shaft of the thigh bone and this thigh bone here you see in a severe osteoporotic woman this is the bone how it looked like radiographically when you look at it under the x ray it looked like so almost about to break anywhere totally you know uh, shelled out and as though it has become a shell and not not at all strong anymore so this is how they look like now what are the symptoms can i think that there is osteoporosis in any person born somebody who is having chronic back pain you know for 3 months 4 months regular back pain is coming for no reason known reason then one reason could be bone strength is becoming weaker second one is spinal deformity don't think all back pains are osteoporosis one reason for back pain i mean osteoporosis is chronic back pain If you find a deformity in the spine, then it could be osteoporosis. Ah, oh, somebody has got decreased lung capacity. They are not able to fully breathe and exhale. That means the there is a problem in the vertebrae which is not allowing them to have a free expansion of the lung. Somebody who is having chronic loss of appetite, if this subtum is there, not able to eat well, it could be a symptom. Frequent sleep disturbances. i am not able to sleep well many women have come with this symptom and we have found out it is the osteoporosis which is the cause of sleep sleep disturbance rather than prescribing a sleeping pill for a, for every ill there is a pill it's not true for sleep disturbance we have to all loss of appetite we need to evaluate if it could be osteoporosis persons who have decreased physical activity they have a tendency for osteoporosis needless to say a good physical activity is very important for all of us 25% increased risk of death so there is a, suppose you know a person is there 60 year old woman same 60 year old another woman woman with osteoporosis the woman has a 25% more risk than the other woman who does not have osteoporosis how do i know what i suggest is you can simple test it can be done go and stand near the wall with the body touching the uh, touch, touching the wall so your head the occiput should be every touching the wall correctly when you stand if you are not able to keep the head touched to the wall the wall occiput distance increases that means the head is forward it cannot touch the wall when you are touching the whole body to the wall that is very important a 3 cm difference from the wall to the occiput is suggestive of osteoporosis a 7 cm distance from the wall to the occiput it confirms almost the diagnosis of osteoporosis and old x rays lumbar x rays that is the the waist x rays the chest x rays thoracic x rays we have to examine them for osteoporosis consider osteoporosis in every body above 50 years women above 50 and men above 65 are at increased risk of osteoporosis ask for old x rays whenever we have in doubt to compare whether the osteoporosis is increasing or decreasing Okay. Do you think that all the bones in the body will end up in fracture, or there is, is there any commonality? Some some bones only are affected than the others. Yes. Hip bone, spine, waist in the tort. The commonest fracture due to osteoporosis or thinning of the bone occurs in the hip joint. The second one is in the spine. the third one is the wrist joint this is the wrist joint the wrist joint why wrist joint is more prone because when we fall we try to land on the hand and then pressure on the hand come like that and the fracture will occur at the wrist likewise the spine also when we suddenly fall on the ground onto our buttocks and land on the buttock 
the spine takes the entire load and then spinal fractures occur. If it, when we are thrown onto the ground when we fall, we fall to one side and our hip joint uh, touches the ground and takes the brunt of the weight bearing. So much so hip fractures are common. So what are the three fractures common due to osteoporosis? Hip fractures, spine fractures and wrist fractures. So this is, these are clinically diagnosed together. They will be so much if you put all of them. Okay. Now, so this is the hip joint x-ray like thing. This is the normal hip joint. Here this woman has got a hip joint replaced by a steel uh, cup and uh, uh, sort of shaft. And this is a total hip replacement. Remember, the combined lifetime risk of breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer put together is less than the risk of osteoporotic fracture. Is it enough? Is it enough news to know that here osteoporosis is so important? If you combine the risk of breast cancer, the risk of uterine cancer, the risk of ovarian cancer put together is less than the risk of osteoporotic fracture. It is not music to the ears. We have to take care of it and then see how we can avoid the risk of osteoporosis. What happens? Let us say a woman has fallen. She had a fracture of the hip. The commonest fracture due to osteoporosis is the hip fracture. And let us say, unfortunately, she or he suffered a hip fracture. Mostly she, because in women it is three times more common or four times more. There are 100 people who have the hip fracture. Only 30% have a full recovery. 50% there is some loss of function. 20% are no more at the end of one year. Means what? If I have 100 women now with osteoporotic hip fracture, they will not celebrate one year from now, 20% of them will be missing. They will not be there. That is in one year, 20% of them will die. Whereas if you have a heart attack, excluding the first one week deaths, after one week to one year, the deaths due to heart attacks are only 10%. Whatever deaths occur there in the immediate period. But after that, the mortality is not there. Whereas here, throughout the year, the risk, risk is there and they die of the fracture. It happened to many of my relatives who had hip fracture. We don't see them after one year. So mortality due to hip fracture is 20%. Full recovery is only 30% and only functional loss is 50%. So much so this underscores the importance of attending to the serious problem. So this is the vertebral body. In the back we have uh, spinal column. In the spinal column you have several sets of vertebrae. The cervical, the neck vertebrae, the chest vertebrae, the waist vertebrae and the tailbone vertebrae, so many vertebrae are there. Each vertebra is, looks like this in a young, very strong, trabeculated, densely mineral packed. In the elderly, you see, it has thinned out and all the trabeculae are very weak and the structure itself is like a cobweb. So anytime it can break. See, in this x-ray, this is the normal size of the... Okay, you see here... This is a young person's uh, vertebral body and this is a person who is elderly with all the thin, thinning out and then weakness like cobweb. This is the normal size vertebral body. You can see very squarish. You see here, this is a fractured vertebral body. There is a compression fracture. Here also there is a compression fracture of this vertebrae also. You see this is rectangular, perfect, whereas this is like a can which you, uh, you, if you step on a can of Coca-Cola, what will happen? It gets compressed. That is how the compression fractures, vertebral compression fracture is the very common thing. What will happen with the vertebral compression fracture? There is a very important structure going on behind that is the spinal cord, which is the, the nerves are all distributed through that. This fracture will impinge on the spinal cord and produce several neurological complications. Apart from severe back pain and inability to use this part of the spine freely. So that is why vertebral compression fractures have to be avoided.
So how do I do that? That's my main question is prevention, isn't it? So first of all, this woman, when same woman, 40 years of age, this is how she is looking, quite erect and then pretty and tall. Same woman after 35 years, she has a bump here. So there is a, that means the vertebral fracture has occurred and height has reduced by around one, one, uh, 3 to 6 centimeters. Loss of weight will occur. Loss of height will occur due to old age. Up to 1 to 2 centimeters is okay. Anything more than 3 to 6 centimeters loss of height is significant loss of height in elderly people. Vertebral body with the bump there. Bump is called the kyphosis. Kyphosis, don't worry about the word. A bump will occur because the spine has compressed and the height of the spine has reduced. This is a uh, sort of, see, a woman in her 35, beautifully standing, erect, no spinal deformity, beautiful lumbar curve, everything. So, a woman, when she comes to around 60 years, already there is osteoporosis, she requires the support like that, and around 70 years, she requires a support for sight, support for leg support, maybe around 80 years, she can't even walk, and then uh, become wheelchair bound. So, this we want to avoid, and this 60, 70, 80, maybe for some people it can happen at 50, 60 and 70 also, depending on the other conditions they have. So we have to be very careful to see that the life is not wheelchair bound or the, the crutch, crutch bound or walker bound. We, I have my own aunt who is now wheelchair bound. She is hardly two years older to me. She cannot walk. She is having two helps to make her, uh, you know, go around in the wheelchair. Such a life we, we, are, we want? No, we don't want such a life. So how do we do that? See, this uh, woman, so there is a compression fracture. See, compression fracture. This is a normal vertebra, the compressed vertebra because of that. The bump is there. This is called the hump or the bump. It's a technically typhosis. 75 lakhs people in India have got spine fracture every year. And it, it goes on increasing. It would be this year 75, only 20% die, remaining 80% are there. Next year, another 75. You can imagine what is the burden of this particular. Two-thirds of them are completely silent. Two-thirds are silent. Acute or chronic back pain is can, can be there acutely. The back pain may strong come and it will continue. Decrease in the height of more than 3 to 6 centimeters. Respiratory difficulties and then stomach difficulties. Digestive difficulties also can occur. Decrease in the life activities. They cannot go out. They cannot be in social gatherings. They cannot participate because of the back pain, because of their inability to walk freely. With the result, depression looms in and loss of self-esteem also. So, and also there is an increase in all-cause mortality. Women with osteoporosis and men with osteoporosis are known to die not only due to osteoporosis, due to all other causes also. Is that good enough for all of us? So, 75 lakh per year is in two-thirds are two-thirds are clinically silent, acute or chronic back pain, decrease in the height of 2.5 to 6 centimeters, respiratory or GI difficulties, decrease in the life, life activities, depression, loss of self-esteem, and then increase in the all-cost mortality. I have till, till now. I have presented the negative side of osteoporosis. Negative side means what are the symptoms, what are the problems, what will be, how many people will die, how, what is the outcome, what will happen to the bones, all looking very frightening. But the positive aspect of it, if life has got both aspects. The positive aspect, the vidhi mukha, the negative aspect, the nishetha mukha. So we have to learn from both the aspects. Although the negativities are there because of age, because of gender, because of menopause, because of low calcium intake, because of low exercise in the childhood. What do I do? 
that is the positivity i take home for me today keshore should i have to lie the live and die with us or is there any way out that's what all of us want to know isn't it so there is a beautiful measurement which was not available around 15 years back in this country this was available only in one or two hospitals across the entire india now this dexa scan double absorption x ray radiometry DEXA is double absorption x ray radiometry double exposure x ray absorption radiometry okay forget about the name it is called the bone mineral density scan also called the bmd scan for your purpose bmd is enough bone mineral density scan it is not a painful procedure it takes around half an hour you will be asked to lay down under the machine like that and they will be recording it in the computer like that the technician will record it where which sides we have to record one the spine which is being recorded here the spine is here and then the hip joint and the wrist joint they will take three site bmd three site it should be done in three sites what are the three sites the spine the hip and the wrist joint this is three side bmd is to be done who should be done everyone should go for this scan anyone suspecting of a pathological fracture what is pathological fracture a fracture due to non not due to road trauma or any fall somebody has got a fracture without road trauma it is a pathological fracture. anyone with loss of height of more than 2 inches or vertebral compression fracture 2 inches is 5 cm anybody with a loss of 5 cm height or there is a compression for a hump which i have shown you like that he must they must undergo women more than every women more than 60 must undergo a bmd test how how frequently preferably every year men over 65 every year they have to have the bone mineral density diabetics whatever may be the age Five years or more diabetes, they must undergo PMD because diabetes increases the risk of bone thinning or osteoporosis. Postmenopausal women with less than sixty also, if there are other risk factors, they must also undergo bone mineral density. And patients who are taking steroid, steroid or thyroid hormones, or prior history of treatment for bone disease. Should also undergo bone mineral density. What is bone mineral density? A simple scan of the spine, of the hips, and of the wrist joints. We have to do, and this is possible in almost a very good way. The big hospital in all the cities today. So you take use of that. Anybody who had a fracture without a fall. anybody who has got height decreased by more than 5 cm women more than 60 men more than 65 diabetics more than 5 years old post menopausal women with other risk factors patients who are on steroids and thyroid hormones they must undergo this test it's not very expensive either compared to mri this is around one third of the mri mri scan will cost you around 10 to 12000 depending on the center and the and the type of the type of the scan it will cost you around 2.5 to 3000 rupees so it is the it is reported like this they won't they will report they don't report it as normally understandable way the report comes as a t score this is a summary score what is a t score briefly i will explain this is the bone mineral density of you and this is the bone mineral density of a young adult of your gender Young adult means thirty year old uh, woman. What is the density we expect in that? And your bone mineral density subtract the young adult and divided by the standard deviation of the young adult of the same gender. Forget about all these calculations. Normal bone mineral density is the T score should be minus one to plus one standard deviation. Minus one to plus one standard deviation is normal bone mineral density. Osteopenia or thinning of the bone starting is minus one to minus two point five. Anything more than minus two point five is osteoporosis. So this will be report, reported as green color. This will be reported in yellow color. This will be reported in red color. 
if you see in your report red color marking that means it is osteoporosis if you see yellow it is between minus 1 and minus 2.5 that means you have to take care to see that it doesn't progress on to osteoporosis okay simply speaking we have here anything more more than minus 1 is normal bone density minus 1 to minus 2.5 is osteopenia we can put it as a yellow color and anything below that is osteoporosis this is how we interpret the result okay most important thing and most uh, healthy and also most welcoming thing is osteoporosis is preventable it's a preventable disease provided i have the will to prevent it start building healthy bones while young there may be some youngsters who are 30s and 40s this is the right time for you to invest invest on your bones it is like investing on your uh, savings you invest now like a uh, health uh, for health reasons investing on the bones is very important what do i do healthy diet lifestyle are important for both men and women when we say women are at risk don't ignore men men also above 60 or 65 they are also they compete with women for osteoporosis what tests are needed and i don't want you to go to the lab just like asking a masala dosa and coffee in the restaurant never go to a lab and ask for tests the tests have to be advised by the doctor you have to see a doctor doctor will advise the needed test for osteoporosis usually they will ask for calcium phosphorus alkaline phosphatase and then the thyroid hormone and an x ray of the chest and also the bmd they will ask but they will they will prescribe you the test don't go and stretch yourself your arm do me blood test they will give you all periodic table blood test they will uh, borelium manganese boron which we never estimate they will try to give you they say we have given you 90 values you give us 9000 rupees don't heed to such a promotional activities you have to go to a doctor to ask for what test to do it is not like ordering idli masala dosa or coffee or vada in the restaurant you have no choice what test you need to do you have to depend on medical aid. okay how do i prevent i all i urge all of you to go to mypyramid.gov this mypyramid.gov is an excellent resource not only for osteoporosis for all nutrition related health related advice use mypyramid.gov to help plan an overall healthy diet so what is the step one step one is get your daily recommended amounts of calcium and vitamin d so what is the normal daily recommended calcium 1000 mg for, for elderly men or women this should be split into 500 in the morning 500 in the evening vitamin d 60k available as 60k weekly once not every day for Four to six weeks. You may not require a prescription for this thing. If you know that your can the vitamin D values are lower and calcium supplementation is required, doctor will prescribe you calcium and vitamin D without fail. You have to take sixty k vitamin K vitamin D every four for four to six weeks and then stop. Don't continue it forever. By calcium, five hundred milligrams morning. 500 milligrams in the evening as tablet form apart from whatever calcium you get in the diet the step one is good amounts of calcium and vitamin d number 2 engage in regular weight bearing exercises what are weight bearing exercises walking is a weight bearing because you bear a tire what body weight on the legs stair climbing with railings you hold the rail climb one floor and come down at least 3 to 4 times if you have Uh, the ground floor and first floor it is ideal for elderly people provided there are railings and they take carefully slowly you can climb the climbing need not be like how a 15 year old will be jumping on the on the staircase you have to climb slowly 
and cycling is a very good exercise if you can do cycling either a stationary cycle at home or a cycle outside if you are afraid of falls you can take a stationary uh, bicycle type of uh, training machine and you can walk you can use treadmill also at home for walk so walking cycling stationary cycling and some people who can swim it is very good to swim swimming is in fact the best exercise and also a regular walking staircase climbing using the support of the railing very important what are the five steps to prevent osteoporosis number 1 healthy diet containing good amounts of vitamin d and calcium if supplementation is required suggested by doctor take supplement number 2 there is no escape from exercise number 3 avoid smoking and alcohol i don't use the word excessive alcohol uh, just to alcohol because in western countries they cannot live without alcohol they may live without taking breath but without alcohol they cannot that's why they say excessive so avoid alcohol avoid smoking particularly with high concentration of alcohol spirit should be because why i was saying is smoking removes the calcium from the bone and throws in the urine through the kidney same thing with the alcohol also step 4 talk to your doctor about bone health and ask them to evaluate your bone health by doing the necessary tests if it is uh, if it is poor take treatment if it is medium like osteopenia you start taking steps to prevent osteoporosis step 5 have a bone density test and take medication when appropriate the test is very simple and it's a very painless procedure for example you know this woman there i have shown you the other diagram similar one is this one here you can see the green yellow and red the green is the normal bone the yellow is the thinned out bone and very diseased bone is the red bone that's how the report comes for he easy understanding so i am repeating what are the five steps the first step is uh, get your daily amounts regular amounts of calcium and vitamin d how do i know either i take tablets or food what foods contain i will show you second one is engage in regular weight bearing exercise weight bearing exercises like walking stair climbing cycling stationary cycle swimming dancing all this number 3 avoid smoking and alcohol number 4 always when you go to a doctor just like you ask the doctor for blood pressure and sugar the doctor please check my blood pressure doctor see whether my blood sugar like that doctor i am around 55 60 years i require to know my bone strength they should always tell you but you can also proactively ask about the doctor the doctor about your bone health then they will explain you and do the necessary tests now do the bone mineral density bmd test This, which is very painless simple takes about half an hour not very expensive compared to other tests okay now what are the foods which can help me to take good intake of uh, vitamin d and calcium anything colorful anything green anything colorful is good for health in general anything white like you know maida ghee butter rice these are negative foods because these are negative foods understand there are positive foods all vegetables all fruits all legumes all carrots and all these things and milk without the cream part of it these are positive foods okay now calcium and vitamin d calcium foods rich in calcium and vitamin d you have to take what are the foods which are rich in calcium and vitamin d orange juice broccoli any green green leafy vegetables leafy vegetables legumes they are all good in vitamin d and calcium yogurt that is the curd and milk uh, as a whole cheese milk puddings frozen yogurt uh, these are some of the things some of the fruits are forbidden for diabetics for reasons of the high calorie content we have to choose what is good enough take daily milk at least 200 ml of milk in the morning 200 ml of milk in the evening this is pasteurized milk with the uh, 1% milk or homogenized milk without having the fat part of it then 
best source of calcium of course is food that is not sufficient then you supplement with calcium and vitamin d calcium load at time don't try to take all 1000 mg of calcium tablet as one dose because i may forget like that you may think but divide them into two doses at least 500 and 500 consume calcium load the day and not in one burst because body cannot handle the load at one time a word about the coffee this coffee every 150 ml of coffee takes away 100 mg of calcium from the bone 150 ml of coffee takes away 100 mg of calcium away from the bone it removes from the bone to get back that 100 mg you have to eat 500 mg of calcium then only 100 mg will go into the bone that means 150 ml of coffee asks me to take a ca- tablet of calcium 500 this, this is to say you reduce the number of cups of coffee and each time have around 75 or 80 ml of coffee similar with the tea with a lesser extract so sodium excess sodium so if you eat salty foods what have what will happen the salty sodium this sodium competes uh, at the kidney for reabsorption to get into the body and in exchange calcium is thrown out calcium is thrown more in the urine so that means if you don't limit your salt intake in order to handle the salt body has to sacrifice the calcium so you reduce your salt intake to less than 2.4 grams less than 2 grams 2 grams per day into 30 days which is 60 grams of salt how much of salt you are buying and using you calculate so that is how it goes okay consuming alcohol is associated with greater risk of low density low bone density and also due to inebriation they may have they may fall and fracture risk is also higher when somebody is inebriated somebody is under alcohol influence they may fall and then produce it increases the uh, chances of osteoporosis and increases the chance for the fall also anything green like this what you what you see on the slide colorful colorful food fruits vegetables they improve bone mineral density and food guide pyramid might uh, pyramid dot go you please all of you go you must have so how how do i prevent falls at home use handrails on stairs and in the bathroom you may be confident i can walk without the rails but don't depend on the confidence the confidence is the handle you have to take the handle and then climb the stairs keep rooms free of clutter like you know a lot of things in the room the chances of you tripping on them and falling is very high keep the floors clean and surfaces are not slippery like you know today's flooring the vitrified tiles and marbles are very slippery and water is not noticed on the floor the moment water is there is without our notice we will fall so after mopping wait for 15 minutes for the floor to dry and if there is a water spillage immediately attend to it and the floors are not slippery wear supportive low heeled shoes and not chappals because shoes will protect you from slipping and falling do not walk with socks or slippers wear supportive shoes even at home also use a 100 watt bulb in every room and not have only the the you know very small lighted bulbs or anything install lights in the ceiling instead of on the on the walls or below the floor or around the floor use rubber mat in the shower tub keep a flashlight at the bedside always when you get up you always try to uh, use the torch light and see where is the floor where to put the foot and check your posture frequently in the mirror whether you are able to stand erect or not how do i prevent falls at home use handrails on the staircase use the hand hand railing on the bathroom keep the rooms clutter free uh, allow your room to have more space to walk floors are, should be clean and not slippery wear supportive footwear without not slippers not socks 
but a low heeled shoes securely tied shoes and well lit rooms 100 watt bulbs install ceiling lighting in the bedrooms use rubber mat in the shower tub and keep a flashlight at the bedside and check posture in the mirror often okay now i have a few more slides maybe i will cover them and then i will stop in another 5 10 minutes okay yeah so public awareness is important that's what we are doing primary care the doctors whenever the patients come for any other ailment they know they should check for the bone uh, parameters and bone density and secondary care once they have fracture they should be given enough care and of course you see here this particular x-ray a beautiful uh, rectangular vertebrae this vertebrae is compressed completely and there is a vertebral fracture this is the same x-ray here that is marked on the other side so these vertebral fractures can be prevented there is you can see the video there is a beautiful way of lifting up those compressed vertebrae this is called the vertebroplasty we inject polymethyl methacrylate into the bone and make it normal so you can see that video once more see the polymethyl methacrylate is injected and the height of the vertebral body is raised this treatment is available for vertebral fractures in most of the centers okay so you see this is the normal hip joint beautiful neck of the femur and then this is the femur nice here you see this has become one part this has become another part this is the fracture neck of the femur you can see here this is the distal radius is fractured fracture fragments have gone uh, heavy this, is, this fragment is this side this, this is a very common fracture also called the fracture of the wrist due to falls this is the shoulder fracture. It's also common, particularly one of our members, senior member of the FOSWL group. This is a second fragment like that you see. Shoulder fractures can occur. So what we have to do? This is an elbow fracture. That is a shoulder fracture. So this I have already shown you. And we can use protective pads. These are the hip pads. They have to be worn on the on the skin surface directly or there in the in the in the undergarment itself they are added there for example this is a hip pad which will uh, you can use a, an undergarment which has got a padding on both the hips here and this padding will protect from uh, falls when you fall the brunt of the pressure is taken by the pad and it doesn't reach likewise you know people elderly people and have wrist supports also. When they fall, they can avoid wrist fracture by using these wrist braces. These are called the wrist braces. These are some of the protective devices available. Always this exercise is very helpful for weight bearing. What you do? Hold on to your table or your, even your cooking desk also. You can use stand, try to stand on one leg with a little support with your finger on that one. And if you are feeling shaky, you can hold with both the hands, but lift your one foot and then have the weight on the other leg. How much time? Try to stand for two minutes on one leg, two minutes on the other leg. If you are not able to stand two minutes, 30 seconds into four times, 30 seconds into four times, three to four times a day, you can do this sort of simple exercise of standing on, the, giving the weight bearing onto the hip and to the knee joint. Weight bearing, this increases the muscle strength. Care to avoid injury, encourage stair climbing using rails, relieve the symptoms and address the nutrition. Now what are the conclusions? Osteoporosis is a preventable disease. It's very important to know because we don't have to say, no, 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 I can't, no, no, not like that. Osteoporosis is preventable. Don't wait till the osteoporosis fracture occurs. Get good peak bone mass should be attained in by youngsters. Not simply, it is not simply like gray hair and aging. Excellent technology in the form of bone mineral density and very good treatments are available. Not only the vitamin D and calcium, we have powerful bone remineralizing treatments. That means the treatments which will reinforce the bone and put the mineral back and make the bones normal are very much in place. We have four or five kinds of drugs which are modern day uh, doctors and uh, patients are getting the benefit. Around 20 years back, these treatments were not available. 
persons at risk can be identified early and treatment can be started modern evidence based medicine treatments are available calcium intake and exercise needless to say are the cornerstone of preventing osteoporosis just imagine you yourself with a hip fracture in a wheelchair or a vertebral fracture with a walker and not able to put your step what will what will be the life quality of life imagine like that encourage all to join the movement of preventing osteoporotic fractures and osteoporosis i will take the questions now i will try to open for everyone and i have a handout to you i will put it in the group all of you can read how to prevent falls how to prevent fractures in old age this is from the osteoporosis foundation international osteoporosis foundation iof website if you go to the iof website all the information is available in english you can take print outs and then not only you have the knowledge you have the attitude to change and use that knowledge and three the practice that is the I try to put it into application knowledge is shravanam attitude is the mananam and practice is the nididhyasana in vedanta here also k a p knowledge attitude and practice have a good attitude towards and then you will be able to do it if we support your our bones they will support us if we support our bones they will support us they support us osteoporosis awareness program this talk is a part of osteoporosis awareness program prevent fractures at all costs put all your energies to see that bone health is restored and prevent fractures i think i am given exactly at 5:40 now it is 6:40 and our time is allotted it's nice that uh, we could complete it within the within this time and i would now like to open it for others to one by one no, please open your mic no need of video you can open your mic audio is good enough to make the questions and then uh, please uh, come come forward with any doubts you have yes yes uh, can i say can i ask one question dr sharma garu just a minute let before me... that let our president dr sharma garu say a few words then it will be open for questions what a wonderful scintillating lecture Mr. Sharma ji, I must thank you very much. The way you have presented such an abstract topic in a very lucid and a glucose form, I am very thankful to you for this wonderful attempt that you have done, and it will very much prevent our own members and older age people causing any fractures by meticulously following. And for the information of the members, the edited Zoom recording of our this talk will be circulated to all the members. we can go through again leisurely and follow what all instructions are given to them Thank <laughs> you. 